We're back on TYT Sports. I'll be there in a minute. No, you're right here right I'm now. I'm here, but He's I'll, be, I'll up right now. be there here. We got uh, emails coming in. It's big, big stuff. Uh, Manchester City just flexed their muscle this weekend, Jason, and showed us, uh, depending on which way you look at the Sadio Mane decision, I thought Manchester City looked great. Uh, even before that, I think they just looked as if they had their uh, focus um, really in place, and I think that they look to be a Premier League winning team just in that game. Um, and I'll tell you why. Something's happened to Sergio Aguero. Someone tell me what has happened to our little selfish Argentinian who puts the ball in the back of the net. He plays very well when Liverpool visit Manchester. Ah, I know that. He scores a lot when they visit Manchester. But the thing is, he's a free man. He squared it to Gabriel Jesus when he could have easily just slotted at home I'm himself. Selfish. It showed a level of maturity that Aguero, I think, was lacking last year when he was caught in some off the ball antics and some high tackles. Remember, he went through, people have like often overlooked the fact of how good he is, but he's he can be pretty dirty at times. But I think that that was a sign to me that he's playing well, this whole myth that I kind of perpetuated as well, that he can't play alongside bigger players. He can play alongside players that are able to work off of him. He needs to be the central striker. He can't work off of an Edin Dzeko, he can't work off of a Jovetic. But those two together, one fascinating point about, I heard the commentator on uh, the recap say Jesus, Gabriel Jesus. Yeah, it might be Jesus. I mean, Is that I right? Gabriel, I've been saying Jesus my whole time. But more importantly, Jesus, uh, he scored in the 45 plus eighth minute, Yeah. right? And then he scored in the 52nd minute, which means he actually scored his first goal after his second <laughs> goal. And that is something that only Jesus can do. And that's remarkable. It just defied logic, time, everything. I think, thank you, Lad Bible, I believe was when I found that. I was like, yeah, that's pretty funny. Uh, it was unselfish, it was an easy goal that could have been for Sergio. Yeah, Aguero, who already it. scored in that game, yeah. I believe, a little end around uh, uh, in terms of it. So, Francis, I have some things to show you. Uh, here's Mane with the boot to face. This is yeah, this element is... number 10. We'll get to that oh, in a second. What a boot to the face, Whoa. oh my god. Uh, number 10, Jacory, if you don't mind, that would be great. Thank oh. you, my friend. Uh, so when you see it from that angle, it looks like a Hulk Hogan leg standing yeah. drop. Uh, and then one more. Wait, we got we got a, oh, we got a, face. We got a follow up. Oh man! Somebody mentions in the comments of this tweet. Uh, wow, he put a smiley face on the back of his ear. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. You got a sticker for being a good sport. Just had a smiley face on the bottom uh, yeah. of the boot. So this one kind of had me splitting too. When I first seen it, I was like, oh, it's a fair tackle. They're both gone for the ball. He's, yeah, his studs are high, maybe a yellow. And I mean, you watch it back, you just have to understand it. The rules are set in place uh, not to be taken case by case, um, but more so to be looked at as what encompasses endangering the opponent. Because that's where you can be seen a strip red. If you endanger the safety of an opponent. So if you go in with a studs up tackle like that, you're fracturing, almost fracturing the guy's cheekbone. You're taking a, a lot of risk Look. in doing that. The same way if you go in with a high studs tackle on someone's leg, and potentially break the leg, it's a straight red. It's just the way that it was the intent that his leg was high. He did not, in my mind, even though the intensity of the game and uh, all of the, I don't know, the adrenaline, but the bottom line is he could have went in with his head and he went very high with his foot. Okay, so I don't think it should have been a red card. I think it should have been an extremely stern yellow. I understand why he was thrown out. Uh, because the, I mean, I know, you look at this picture. <laughs> he's like, look at that. Look, look at the picture. But. One of the things that we talk about that you bring up all the time is intent. Yeah. Did he intentionally kick him in the face? And you gotta follow Mane's eyes. Uh, here's my diagram. Um, X being Mane, O being Ederson, ball being ball. The ball was above, very high above Ederson's head. Yeah. And if Mane was able to get his foot above Ederson's head, there was a, all the plausibility in the world. It would have been touched with enough skill to not kick him in the face, but, you, but, but his face got in the way of Mane's foot. No, and that is what I gotta say, I gotta say, look, Ederson's face took one for the team, and there is no doubting it, he should be on the team of the week. <laughs> uh, he, should, he, he should, first of all, he shut out Liverpool, it's, kept a clean sheet, and his face took, I know, I know. No, but, but I'm telling you, it's a, it's stop showing me every damn it's picture. A bad take. It's a bad take to think that his one for all, there's the rules in the game, you cannot lift your foot that high. Simply, I don't care how what athletic if the ball, you are. What if you're going for the ball? Go for it with your head. You have to? You have to, that's the rules of the game. You're but then you'd be on your leading butt. with your head into his head. Then it's head to head, you're that's going for the ball. That's way worse than the foot. Did you see the guy's face? 
Have you, could you seen his face if he got hit in the head? No, head, collisions by the head are rough, but- I know, but we talk about- There's a level of protection. I know, but we talk about intent. Yeah, his intent was not to hurt him, but Fair the game. risk, the intent of him going with his head isn't to hurt him either. Fair play, but yellow card. Nah, it's, you can't be- Fair play, yellow card. The thing is, I will, we can agree on one thing. His three game ban is too much. I think it should be a one game ban, because I don't think there was any malice in it. Three's a lot. Three's a lot and to put out a star money, player. And yeah. true. So yeah, one, okay, I mean, sure, you're Jay. gonna send him off at the pitch at that point. Sure, don't ban him three So games. Jay, yeah. do you uh, feel the same about uh, high sticking that results in someone's eye being poked out? A high stick? Like they're going for the puck, the the puck was up in the air, and they went for high. You went for it. It depends high, on you know? it depends on the intent. It has to. You have to show me an example of it. If he was, if his I don't eyes know, are, but it's, it's if his example. eyes are focused on the puck and he's trying to make a play, especially that close to goal in a hockey sense. But I think the point is, like, there's a rule against it for that reason. Yeah. You directly right. violated right. that rule, right. and then that's the, why. They well, how the high rule, could so your leg go? Your leg it, should. You know? If the ball is at your. Chest. chest height, right? There's no distinct line. It's not like a diagram with a little line by someone's chest because we're all different heights, blah, blah, blah. Right. Uh, but if the ball is that high to it's the point where, to. the point you should There's not be, you, you can't lift your leg up you that can't high. You can't you're not supposed to. No, you can't. It's a free kick, it's, it's a, a foul. Okay. There's been plenty of times where guys have tried to kick the ball in the air and it's a it's a foul in football. So I play a stir, I think that, I mean, I still, I would take a tent, intent into account and then if you're gonna do a red card, three games seems like a lot. Yeah, three games does, because of there's no malice in it. It's just, when you show your studs, in football, regardless yeah, of good. where it is, like, you're, okay. it's seen as malice. Here's an example, Felipe Luis's tackle on, was it Messi? Messi, yeah, studs high. Intent studs high, and yeah. he was not going for ball. Ball yeah. was nowhere near, his eyes weren't focused on anything besides yeah. Messi's face. Yeah, but he's protected by the idea that the ball's there to be won with his foot. <laughs> It's like the ball's on the pitch, I'm gonna go kick this guy. Yeah, so when the ball's at any time here, like regardless of how horrible your tackle is, you can be somewhat protected by the idea that Look, I was going man, for the ball. I watch enough NFL to know that getting kicked mm -hmm. in the head is a lot better than getting helmet to helmet, or in this case, head to head. I don't know, man. If you, Yeah, it could have been bad if they, I've seen horrendous head injuries where both players have been going into each other, but goalkeeper yeah, specifically, scary. after what happened to Pedal Check four or five years ago, fractured his skull, has Ooh. to wear his helmet. Uh, they're very protective over goalkeepers, and he that was a very brave move for Edison to come out and attack it with his head, and I think that Sadio Mane relied on his athleticism. Yeah, hold on, why wasn't he, another question I'd say is why wasn't he punching that ball? Because it was outside the box. You can't punch the ball outside the no, box. No, you can't touch it with your hands. That's a really good reason, it's a very good reason. So you have to I was just head. testing to make sure you knew he was outside <laughs> the box, obviously. In so this he case. was very brave in doing uh, that. But don't let this, I mean look, a 10 man Liverpool had no chance to get Manchester City, but don't let it uh, underscore the fact that Manchester City is now goal differential with Manchester United are almost on par. Yeah. Um, and Manchester City has also not lost a game this season. And Liverpool is not an easy opponent unless you get them down to 10 men. Um, while Manchester United and the other Manchester, and what I do think will continue to be a battle for first place over Manchester United or Manchester City for the entire season, um, Manchester United slipped up against Stoke. Yeah. And ended up with a draw on Chopa Motings after an unbelievable save by David De Gea. Oh my God, that Unreal was one of the with one craziest from, instinct saves I've ever seen. That was the goat say goal. It was so fast. In like the he, World Cup a, and he saved it. He's a cat, <laughs> he's an absolute cat. And then immediately, <laughs> pew! Yeah, and the, the thing that I wanna, Talk about really quick with Manchester Sorry, United yeah, is on. I think that um, what I seen at Manchester United was just a reminder that uh, they are still a lot to do at the back. Um, they don't have a firm central back partnership at the moment, and I think they need to figure that out um, because Eric Bailly and Philip Jones did not look in the same page. And I know that they're coming back from an international break, blah blah blah. It could be a little bit of a hangover from that, but they just looked far too easily beaten behind. Uh, Eric Bailly looked distracted. When he's a one-on-one -on -one defender, he's very talented and he's so athletic, he's hard to get by. But in reading the game, far too often he stepped up too late, far too often they were misaligned. And as a former centre back, it's like watch, it's like if you're a musician that's listening to bad music, when you watch someone kind of like th those so misaligned uh, uh, back four, especially when they're trying to play an offside trap. So I think they should have adjusted 30 minutes in when they realized that they consistently were getting caught, well, but they didn't and they ended up getting punished for it. I thought that, I think that going forward, if teams are taking note, which I'm sure they are, uh, especially when it comes to Champions League play, I think speed on the wings is gonna be a major problem for Manchester United to defend. Yeah. Because as I was telling you, Shakiri, Shakiri, Shakiri? Shakiri. I can never pronounce it, right. sorry. Person. Shakiri he caused uh, a lot of problems. is blindingly fast and was yeah. causing a lot of problems in the open field in the middle and then of course getting it out to the wings. Uh, they were able to put on an attack. Now, we're, we're holding Manchester United to this absurd standard now because of how they played their first three games. Um, that the expectation can't be to blow out every single opponent. 
Having said that, uh, the draw against Stoke shows that there is obvious weaknesses in there, yeah. as you mentioned, their back line, and I think speed's gonna be a major problem. So I think, not to get way ahead of ourselves, but Champions League is coming tomorrow. And I'm really curious to see how Manchester United responds to trying to win the Premier League this year and balancing a lot of expectations in a relatively easier group than others in the Champions League, and especially seeing different threats from different leagues. Yeah, it's, um, they, they can't get complacent. It can be very, very, you see what happened with Tottenham. They were in a very a really easy group point. and they just were disastrous. But let's hold that and we'll cut this clip here. Thank you for joining us. Comment below and we'll pick it up in just a second because I want to talk about Tottenham and Chelsea, yeah. London and Champions League.